Well, I do not have any proof in this, but someone, Calhoun and what was your name? Bruce Collins uh, said something interesting. Let's go back here. Um, yeah, how do I start? Right there is the epicenter, right? So what am I gonna do is, what I have done is I have taken the original and slowed it down to heaven in a duration of over 10 minutes out of a few seconds. So what am I gonna do now is I am going to zoom it down to 321%. And then we're gonna place it right there. This is where it starts. So, if I move this one over there, so it's not in the way, and then we just take it step by step. There. As you can see, according to reports. This is so-called an underwater volcano eruption, correct? Now, if you have ever seen an underwater uh, nuclear explosion, yeah, I'm saying nuclear explosion, you are going to see something extremely white. Why is that? Because when a nuclear bomb goes off, it is the same temperature as we say the temperature of the surface of the sun is. That would be 10,000 Fahrenheit. Something so hot will make water vaporize into a white mist fog immediately, instantaneously. Now, volcanic ash don't even come close to that temperature. Not even close. Correct? So, let me calculate that to just give you a perspective. I have here on my phone a converter. And, of course, it's going to play some music for me because they want me to pay for it, but I'm not interested in that. So let's say in Celsius that lava is around 900 Celsius. That would be only 1,652 Fahrenheit compared to 10,000 Fahrenheit. Get my drift now? Now let's look at it. Clicking to the next frame, now something starts happening here in a moment. Still clicking. There. Right? Do you see from there to there the intensity, or I can't say intensity, the instant expansion. And I mean instant expansion. And then we go to the next picture where it changes. There. Now we zoom it out a little, like that. This look exactly like a mushroom cloud seen from the top. Look at the shadow, perfectly circular. You look at the entire circumference of this explosion here how perfectly circular it is. You 
pick soon. And there, again, zoom it out. Right there. You see how fast that went? A nuclear detonation, the mushroom clouds, expands to four miles up to seven miles in one second. That's how violent this detonation is. You can go on YouTube and look at nuclear detonations all you want and you will see some similarities. I'm telling you, a nuclear device, when it detonates, all the energy implode in a millions of a second. And from that moment on, all the energy is released outwards. And in less than a second, the fireball or mushroom cloud has formed to seven miles wide, up to seven miles wide. It depends on the yield of the nuclear device. To me, it is pure white. There is no discoloration of any kind. Is If this is a volcanic eruption, this would not be the color. Don't come and tell me that you have ever seen a volcanic eruption being pure white. It is a mix of volcanic rock that's it going from black to light brown, but directly pure white like this? Nah, not so much. Something was going on out here, and I don't know what it is. And still I can't prove my point. I don't see anything coming in like an impact of sorts. I don't see that. I have tried to look and look and look, and I do not see anything coming into the area. But again, look at how uniform it is. And here you see actual landmass is being blasted away from the epicenter. Zoom out again. All this is bedrock blasted away from the detonation. It's not the shockwave. This is material blown away. That's the shockwave. The white here. This is earth material blasted away, and you can see how shredded it is. This energy output here is so intense, you would not believe it. And they heard it in Australia. Oh, that was a mistake. So let's do it again. Right there. There you see perfect circle. Perfect. It's right there. Right? You already see the shadow. So that kind of tells you what time of day it is. There. You see that? Instantly. So let me do something else. Let me go in desktop folders, videos, video, and then find Tonga. Tonga 1. This is the one I got in here. Like that. Stop. Minimize. Put it in here, so you can actually see what's going on, and put it down here, it's a little too much, down there, a little too 
much still. Okay, this sequence is running loop. And this sequence is 2 minutes and 30 seconds long. And I kept running this video. Just to repeat it. Now pay close attention on the entire frame. How fast is it going? It can kind of give you an idea of when I'm talking about a mushroom cloud expands to seven miles, up to seven miles in one second. Look, this is real time. You see all the material here, out here being blasted away, literally bedrock pulverized. You can see it's, it's no longer, it's not rock, it's completely vaporized. Just keep looking at it. Look how fast it goes. Instantly. Violently. So let me stop it here and then save it. And then I'm going to find a video on YouTube from a nuclear de detonation. Deal? So let me pause it. Now look at this then. This is 1958. This is an underwater. I believe this is uh, recorded at the Bikini Islands. Look very carefully how fast this is going. How they're signaling that they are ready for detonation. Now watch carefully how fast that is. See that? Pure white. Just like we saw on Tonga. Pure white. All right, look at that. This one is probably a little deeper in the ocean. But you see, it's all white. There's only one little discoloration right there. What else is white? Okay, let me show you something else. Okay, this is from another angle. Look at this. Pay close attention. Coming out of nowhere. See that? See how rapid that happened? Pretty intense, right? Because there was a reason for why a nuclear device was detonated at Tonga. Maybe it has something to do with the Ring of Fire. Maybe it's something they want to accelerate in another place. Look at that. You see how fast this is going? Pretty intense, right? 
we go find a volcanic. Now look at this then. This is in Japan. It goes fast, but it has not even close to the same signature. Look closely. Last year, Mount Shindig erupted in Japan, which covered nearby towns in ash and dust for See weeks. how sporadic Luckily, it is? The volcano is situated. You don't even move that fast. Look how dirty it is, too. Here comes the pyroclastic cloud, which is not white, but is actually gray. If you don't see that signature in the sky at all, what we see, those people are dead. Sorry, but they are. They ain't gonna survive that. Pyroclastic. Pyroclastic flows are around 500 Celsius degrees. As soon as it hits you and you take your first breath, it will vaporize your lungs. Let me go back to my video. So let's take a recap on it again. Right there. Look how big it is already. This is seen from space, people. This is not taken from an airplane at 30,000 feet. This is taken from a satellite around 400 miles out. See? Just wait. Coming. Boom. See the difference? How huge that is in an instant. Let me just run the bloody uh, thing here. <coughs> I know it's a caldera. But I say again, there might be a very good reason for why someone chooses a, a, a clandestine operation setting off a volcano with a nuclear device to serve another purpose somewhere else in the ring of fire. Because this rapid expansion here, and look at the shock wave on the left side from six o'clock to 12 o'clock, look at it. That is intense. That has the signature of an explosion, not from a volcano, but from a bloody huge bomb. Look at the color. That's just my 10 cent people. kind of have it like this in in the back of my head and my I can feel it on my piss something ain't right with this this has the exact same signature as the bikini nuclear detonation which also was an underwater detonation There you have it. That's just how I feel about it. Something ain't right here. This thing is expanding way too fast for being a volcanic eruption. Way too fast. And they hear it in Australia. Right? And what has the loudest sound known to man? A volcanic, actually a nuclear destination. Let's say you can uh, survive the flash, which would be a load of gamma rays that would instantaneously kill you. You could 
survive the heat blast, which will hit you a second later. And a second later after that, the pressure wave, you survive all those three elements in the first two seconds of the detonation. And then the sound will hit you. The sound is so loud, it will bloody explode your brain. Just look at it. How fast it's going. How huge that is. Volcanic eruptions don't do that. Period. I don't believe that. Sorry, I don't. Something ain't right here. That I'm convinced of. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I've been looking very close at this. This had the signature of a nuclear device. Setting off a volcano. But for what purpose? You should soon find out. God bless you. Well, I could be wrong, but Bruce Collins said we heard three booms. I don't know where uh, Bruce Collins is located. Maybe he's from New Zealand, or maybe he's from Australia, but he hear three booms. Now, that's a little mysterious, wouldn't you say? So let's look at a volcano at Papua New Guinea that explodes pretty violently, but they don't even come close. We don't even have the same expansion speed as what we just witnessed. So look at it. There you see the shock wave. Long after. Right? So what I can say is if this video is being removed, that means I must be over the target. Can we agree on that? Right on top of the target. Thanks, Bruce and Calhoun, for bringing this to my attention. I love people with eyes to see and with ears to hear. Good deal. Okay, thank you for all your inputs regarding the Tonga Volcano, aka nuclear detonation. I just learned that um, Tonga is going to go away from uh, the US dollar to um, Bitcoin cryptocurrency. So that might be a little warning shot over the bow. You do as we say, or we will deal with you. Now, the funny thing is, I have here an image. I am uh, subscribing to something called Earth Sky. Here is the volcano eruption <laughs> seen from the side. Now, does that look like a volcanic eruption to you? No. This is exactly the signature of a nuclear detonation, especially when you look at the stem. You see these fanning out here? This is a very often occurrence when you have a nuclear detonation. You see it here, it hangs down like that. Looks like a palm tree. That's what nuclear detonations are doing. So I was absolutely right. This is a nuclear detonation that set off a volcano. So, the funny thing is, the incredible power of yesterday's eruption, detonation, of the Tonka volcano reverberated around the world. Uh-huh, okay. If it re reverberated around the world, as said, we're talking about a nuclear detonation, not a volcano. Because if this reverberate around the world, this will be the largest volcanic eruption known to mankind for all times. Satellites in space captures uh, action even before the eruption started. Of course, they were conveniently, or should we just say, they were just happened to be there at the exact right time when this took place. No, they wanted footage of their dirty deed. That's why we got these pictures we got, or images, videos. 
So, showing the island sinking, and then later mushroom cloud. Yeah, exactly. You are using the exact same word, mushroom cloud, and pressure waves expanding outwards. Approximately 200,000 lightning strikes even struck near Tonga in the first hour of the eruption. Well, I believe that. Nuclear bombs do that too. Oh, yeah. People as far away as Australia and across the ocean in Alaska, Canada heard the sonic boom. Yeah. And, you know, nuclear detonation, as I said in my other video, my first one about this, is that a nuclear detonation has the loudest, loudest sound you can possibly imagine. And it's moving with the speed of sound. And there's so much pressure behind it, yeah, it will fly around and it will be heard in many places. So it says here barometers, that is what is measuring the uh, air pressure, you know, high pressure, low pressure, around the world such as this one in Switzerland, recorded the pressure wave from the South Pacific. Now we're talking, and I mean 10,000 miles away, people, at least, okay? And their barometers, their pressure term, uh, measuring instruments caught this. I don't think so. I I'm sorry. This is BS. I don't know what to say else than this, because what is there to say? This don't brought me anything, pretty much. But a country up in the Alps, over 10,000 miles away, caught this. That's not a volcanic eruption. It cannot be. It's impossible especially when it's an underwater explosion. And now that they caught this in Switzerland, they say, I wonder what the aftermath of this nuclear detonation at Tonga is going to be. Either it is a warning shot to um, maybe the world maybe Tonga specifically, but why would they go to such great length when they got other means that they can punish a population for not submitting to their new world order? And I don't think anybody should submit to the new world order. And if you're not caught up, I just say to last man standing, give them hell. Don't ever stand down. Don't ever give up no matter how hopeless it seems. They don't own you. It's your temple. They don't have any right over your temple. None. This is interesting, wouldn't you say? They happen to have a satellite placed exactly above the epicenter at the right time. It has the signature and the expansion speed as a nuclear detonation. And now we're seeing it from the side. And there's no question in my mind what this is. This is a nuclear bomb. There's no question. You can see it right there. And you get it again, as I said in my other video. Go on a search nuclear detonations. Look at the images. Just follow it closely. You only have to watch a couple of 10 most powerful nuclear bombs or something like that, and you will see this. Exactly this. This might be the ash, but this, that's the nuclear bomb, the fingerprint, right there. But why? 
need to keep an eye out. We need to look into that. And if anybody has some serious information, not BS, I don't care for that. Let me know. Let me know. Over and out. God bless you.